Recognized, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2. Recognized, Lindenhoek, 0, 0, 7. Hello team. Today in the Watchtower, we welcome Vinton Hoik. Vinton has worked in the art departments for dozens of cartoons since the 1990s, acting as a storyboard artist on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Batman, and Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, among others, as well as animated films like Batman The Longest Halloween Part 1, Justice League The New Frontier, and multiple Scooby-Doo movies. He's also been a director for animated series ranging from Transformers to Harley Quinn, but for our listeners, he's probably best known for his work on Young Justice as both a storyboard artist and the director of multiple episodes from seasons three and four, including Private Security, Nightmare Monkeys, and Tale of Two Sisters. Fenton, I am so excited to welcome you to Whelmed. Oh, my pleasure. Good to be here. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that our discussion episodes draw on anything and everything related to Young Justice, including all three and a half seasons so far, the comics, and the video game. So at the time of this recording, that includes everything up to episode 13 of season four. So if you have not read, seen, or played all of the material and are spoiler wary, please consider this your warning. And with all that out of the way, let's dive in. So I touched on a few things in our intro, but could you tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Um, well, i am uh, been an episode director primarily for the past uh, maybe 15 years. I haven't actually tracked it exactly. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, I started directing on The Batman, which before you get too excited, it was not the Bruce Timms version, but the one that came after. <laughs> yes. So as soon as so I many say Batmans. The, as soon as I say the Batman, that a lot of animation fans are like, "Oh, that's my favorite." But <laughs> it might have been your favorite if you were like six or seven or eight years old at the time, which I've I've found out in recent years as uh, you know people that were that age that have grown up since have told me. So I've been directing ever since then. Done a little bit in the. DTV area. I was a sequence director on something called Dead Space. I directed an episode of Invincible, which was an hour long, which was really cool. My goal is to eventually direct something that's movie length. So nice. Yeah, I've been doing that mostly. And then it was like storyboarding before that. Yeah. So what inspired you to pursue a career in animation? Do you have an origin story? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was, uh, Actively and aggressively trying to pursue a career in comic books. And, uh, you know, I, I love filmmaking, but um, I was, you know, up in the uh, Northwest and uh, I had no idea how to even approach that career choice. Uh, but I could draw pretty well and uh, love, still love comic books and was going to comic book conventions showing my portfolio. And um, this uh, veteran in animation, Rick Hoberg saw my work and uh, said he needed some help on some, some of his animation storyboards. And he was uh, working on the X-Men series of the nineties and Spider-Man, all kinds of things I, I loved at the time and, and still do. And uh, so I became one of his art assistants. I was making some inroads in the comic books as well on my own. Um, and I did, I have done some of that. But I quickly found that the animation work paid a lot better and was more consistent. And I just kind of moved more and more in that direction and eventually came down to L.A. And I was working for Sony Animation and uh, shows like Jackie Chan Adventures and a little bit on the, the Godzilla cartoon they were doing at the time. And, and uh, yeah, eventually I joined the union and just kind of went into diving into that full time. And, you know, that eventually. Uh, Brandon Vietti, who was my director at the time on the Batman, was like, do you ever want to do direct? And I was like, yeah, you know what? I do want to direct. Um, and then I just moved into that. And then we kind of been here ever since, for the most part. <laughs> was was there a, a story behind moving from storyboarding into directing? Or is that just a very kind of natural path for what you wanted to do in your career? It's a fairly natural path because you have to, it's, the, it's kind of a gateway to directing in animation mm -hmm. because you have to be a good storyteller. Um, and interestingly enough, it was with Brandon, you know, I, I, way back when he was just a director, I was yeah. just a storyboard artist. 
you know, long before his Young Justice. And that's that, of course, helped me get into Young Justice eventually because we had worked together, eventually had worked together well on the Batman, although I always thought he was going to, like, uh, ask me to not come back for <laughs> the first few seasons, but he, he kept asking me to come back. Um, and eventually we, we uh, got, all, got on pretty well and it became one of his, you know, favorite board artists to work with. So Nice. Yeah, it took a while, but eventually he had something else. I don't even, I'm not even sure what that something else was. I mean, obviously he's been there ever since and he's just continued to, you know, do projects that are cooler and more interesting. Yeah, he had something else that he was going on to. And I can't remember what that was, but he recommended me as the guy to replace him. So at the end of whatever season that was, it might have been at the end of season four. We sort of co-directed the season finale, and then I believe, and then and then I uh, directed my first. My first episode was actually a Batman Superman team up, so which was an incredible. You know, those are two of my favorite characters, so that was an incredible thing to be able to jump into as a director. Awesome. So you have mentioned quite a few things of your your love for comics and animation, but like, what was what was your history with DC and with comics before Young Justice and before you got into the industry in general? Were you like always reading comics as a kid or is that something that came later? <laughs> yeah, always reading comics as a kid. You know, I was I was a kid in the 70s and 80s, you know, so there was, a, you know, comics. It's a, un, almost unrelatable to someone who's young now to look at the world the way it was back then, but you know, comics was one of my main forms of entertainment, you know, and we didn't have access to everything and everything. So I had, well, I get ever I get my hands on and I'd read and reread them. And, and, uh, and I just love, uh, I love telling stories. I love writing. I love everything about that. And I could draw. So I just thought that would, could be a good medium for me to kind of tell stories in. And so, yeah, it's something that I aspired to do from probably my earliest memories, you know, mm-hmm. making comics. And I broke in, in a real sense, I guess, broke in with uh, Now Comics doing uh, Green Hornet, um, all work that I, that looks terrible now by today's standard. But that's, that I broke in there. And then I, uh, uh, I guess the next bigger thing was Mortal Kombat comics from Malibu. This was all not uh, writing or anything, but just penciling, drawing. And then I had started moving in more into animation during that time. And then uh, Malibu dissolved and became Marvel uh, West Coast. And I started doing a little bit. I did an X-Men pinup. I think that was kind of the last thing. So I'd started to do a little bit of stuff. Oh, I did some other thing too. But it was like a Malibu Marvel crossover with some unknown writer at the time called Brian Michael Bendis. And... Uh, and then, so I, I was moving up, doing more, starting to do more interesting stuff. But at that point, it was getting, so I kind of had to make a choice of what was going to, you know, be my full-time gig. You know, I could never, never made a great living doing comics. So I just, you know, I wanted to have more of a normal life uh, financially <laughs> and uh, med- medical insurance and uh, and, uh, you know, I, and, and animation was also something that was of interest to me. So I just, yeah. that was it. And then aside from that, I, I had one, a couple opportunities, I guess, to, to write. I wrote for DC's Wednesday Comics a few years ago. And then uh, I did something that I ended up not being super happy with. Uh, it was like a Halloween story. They were both dead man stories. And uh, the first one I wrote, with um, a t- very talented artist, uh, Dave Bullock, who also has done a lot of work in animation and some directing even. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about, that catches up pretty well, I think. <laughs> so usually we tend to ask our guests when they first saw Young Justice, but that doesn't seem like the right question for you. <laughs> so instead, how did you end up working on Young Justice all the way back in season one? Um, I was freelancing. Uh, just helping out with boards at the time, I believe I was directing on Transformers and uh, at Hasbro, and I was there for quite some time, probably eight years, I, I want to say. 
So I guess it must have been, I don't know, what, some point during that directing run that uh, Young Justice started up. I just just helping out, you know, wherever they needed help. And I had been divorced at that time and needed extra money. <laughs> so uh, that was an extra incentive. And I just thought the show was really cool and was interested in working with Brandon again. And so that, that went pretty well. Um, and then when I became available after Transformers was over, uh, I think... That's the next thing I went on to. I could be wrong. If you look at my IMDb, you could tell me otherwise. But I think uh, directing on on season uh, three was what came after Transformers. And it had you know, been because of the, the work I'd done for Brandon beforehand. Awesome. So moving into some of our larger questions, this is perhaps the broadest possible question to start with but for our listeners who might not know what exactly does a director in animation actually do like which roles among the cast and crew do you work with to create stories uh, yeah i work the most closely with the board artists on my team and then uh, you know we we meet early on with brandon and greg and uh, we go over the script together and you know we get notes and things to apply, and then uh, I go through the script and uh, break it down between the different board artists, and then uh, you know I put my my own notes about you know what I'm looking for within a sequence or a scene, and then they rough it out and submit it to me, I, and then I put drawing notes over the top of that, and we submit that to Brandon and Greg for review, and they give us more notes. And DC gives us notes. Although uh, one of the great things about Young Justice is uh, there was a a lot of trust that had been built up between the execs and DC and and Greg and Brandon. We usually didn't get a lot of notes from them. Um, So that was pretty great. It was usually coming mostly just from Brandon and Greg. They're always good. They always help make the show better. And uh, we would just uh, apply those to the finished board. And hopefully, hope we we did a good job, and <laughs> and then uh, you know eventually that gets uh, edited and and locked for time in an animatic. You know, all the boards get compiled into that, and then that gets sent overseas to get animated. So, what was the process for deciding which directors worked on which episodes for Young Justice, and how was that? How did that compare to directing jobs you've had on other shows? Not something I could answer really for sure. I don't usually ask. I just, I come in and then they have a, uh, you're directing this episode, that episode, and that episode. <laughs> and I'm like, great. As okay. long, you know, as long as I'm, as long as I'm here. So uh, I know sometimes they try and cast like towards a particular director's strengths. I, I, I think that's happened in my case uh, at times. You know, I think a lot of times it's just the luck of the draw, being able to get a really cool episode or a season finale. Um, I love working on season finales because even though they're ambitious and hard, they tend to be, you know, some of the better ones. So, yeah, it's really it's uh, a lot of it's just, I think, luck of the draw as far as what episode you get. And then. From there, you said that you assign different scenes to different storyboard artists. And that is that just kind of you as a director judging whose strengths fit which scenes best, kind of? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, in my case, I, you know, I usually, uh, I do do that, but I try to be as equitable about it as possible because, uh, you know, some board artists are, are really good with character. Some are really good with action. Some are really good with comedy, but it's always been my opinion that action, especially on a show like Young Justice, which can be fairly ambitious at times, is uh, can be some of the most difficult and time consuming. So, yeah, you know, I do uh, assign out to uh, board artist strengths, but I try not to abuse that too much. And I'm sort of, I'm sort of, I'm sort of there as the quality control. So if uh, so if a board needs to be a little more dramatic in some area or a little more dynamic with the action, then that's part of my job is to kind of go in there and 
bring it to the level of where it needs to be yeah. before it heads back to, to Brandon and Greg for review. And how does your history working in storyboarding kind of affect the way you direct for animation or does it, or is it just kind of a natural thing for you that way? Yeah, it, it definitely does have an effect. I'd say there's a high percentage of directors that have very high percentage that have come out of storyboarding. Makes and sense. Having storyboarded for as long as I did, I think definitely helped give me a certain perspective on it as a director. Because I know what it's like to be in the trenches, climbing that mountain as a storyboard artist with your, with, you know, with your assigned sequences and, the, you know, having to start with a blank page storyboard panel page to to build off of so it does yeah it definitely has has an effect with how i i direct because i appreciate what it takes to to be a good board artist i feel like it would give you a really helpful perspective to like fully understand the amount of work and the ways that everything goes into making that happen yeah for sure for sure so you've worked on both television animation and animated feature films. So are there any major differences in the storyboarding processes between those two mediums? Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say I've animated on a feature film. I've animated on DTVs, which fair are, enough. I, fair enough. Yeah, which are um, you know just ones definitely they're they're a step below direct not, to DVD films. Yeah, if not if not an overall enjoyment and quality. Uh, that's, you know, if we're competing up with feature level, that's that's a pretty high compliment because a DTV is done closer to a TV schedule and budget. You know, it's nowhere near the, the time and budget that would go into, let's say, a Pixar movie or, a, or any, you know, studio, larger budgeted studio movie. So, um, yeah, so, but I've been very happy to have directed on 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 those DTVs. I guess you're referring to the long Halloween maybe as one of them. Yeah. Things like that. Things like um, any of the DC animated movies and things like that, that my, that <laughs> sometimes I do forget that there is a, a difference in those from like large scale feature films and the like direct to streaming or direct to DVD films like those. Yeah, it's it's worth pointing out. I mean, they might be better than a lot of the the mainstream <laughs> films in 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 many ways. But it, yeah, it's it's good to keep in mind that we're we're doing this on a fraction of the of the time and and budget of you know a Zack Snyder a Justice League film, let's say. But uh, so my experience because of that, my experience isn't necessarily that different. Uh, than it is working on the TV side or just the episodic side because you're just getting a little bit more time to work on it, but not a lot necessarily. But I do enjoy it. And that's that is something I'd like to do more of for sure. Very cool. So on Young Justice, you've directed for a wide range of different tones and different characters on the show. So mm -hmm. were there ever certain characters or themes that really gravitated you toward an episode on Young Justice, or in general, outside of that particular series? I know you said that you don't get to pick your episodes, but were there ever specific things from an episode that made you very super excited to be like, oh, this is one I want to do. This is definitely one that is in your wheelhouse kind of thing. I think that's one of the, the great things about Young Justice is uh, Brandon early on, when he, you know, this is before Young Justice, had before season one, yeah, I remember he had called me and, and uh, he had mentioned that there was a new series he was working on and he uh, you know we hadn't worked together in quite a long time since that since the Batman and he just asked me you know what kind of things I liked working on and you know what I considered to be my my strengths and and I you know I told him like you know I, I love uh, the action genre uh, but and everything that comes out of that action comedy action horror action with superheroes that's the cool thing about young justice is it it manages to like touch upon all of that so there you know the there's a great action comedy buddy cop type episode uh, i did in season three 
you know, with the, with the, I can't, I can't remember the name of the episodes very well, unfortunately, think, you might be able to help me out there with the, with the, <laughs> it's a little with, bit of my job. Yes. I think that one's private security. Yeah, with see, the, that one, all the Roy clones and everything. Right. And that was, that was one of my favorite, that was one of my favorite scripts. And that ended up being one of my favorite episodes that I worked on from that season. And I was really excited to, to, to be kind of having fun with that, that type of story. Uh, and then, uh, and then when I read the, the Dr. Fate one, uh, with, uh, you know, the, the, the monstrosity in the warehouse made up of all the kids, I was like, oh yeah, that's like, I can't wait to tackle that, you know, cause I love you know, movies like John Carpenter's The Thing. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. It's been kind of great that way is, um, and I think that's something that Greg and, and Brandon have done very purposefully, which is to not to settle into one genre or thing, but to keep it fresh by, by exploring different, different genres. And I'm, you know, I've enjoyed it all. Definitely. It's, it's very cool that a show like this lets everyone involved kind of stretch so many different storytelling muscles as it were (laughs) in so many different directions. Yeah. That sounds like it would be a lot of fun as a director to be able to tell so many different kinds of stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there's of course the, the espionage. There is a there's a you know the great episode uh, with the storyline that you know going going back to the connecting back to the League of Shadows with the uh, the all female crew Cheshire and yeah and the other characters that was great and the, of course the best one the, and the best moment out of uh, that was the one that Brandon himself uh, storyboarded which was. A killer uh, fight in a warehouse with all the lights off. <laughs> yes, I, re- I remember. I think I saw you talking about this on Twitter when the episode came out. If I can ask, how did Brandon oh. end up being the one who storyboarded that scene? Was that something you maybe asked him, uh, or did he come to you and say that he wanted to do that? Or oh no, he he did. He just uh, he he did that. He does that um, at, at least a few different times. I think <laughs> the season. Not, not necessarily on my episode, but he just, you know, there's something where he has a, he just has a very particular vision, you know? And so, and then, you know, quite frankly, and when you saw the board routes for that one, it's just, we weren't, we weren't getting that vision that he had. So I think he felt like the best way for him to, to kind of um, get that across was just to do it. <laughs> you know, so that's, that's what he did. And it, it looked amazing. It does. I wanted, I wanted to take credit for it. But I just, I, yeah, I just couldn't because I think uh, online Greg was like somebody had pointed out how amazing that sequence was, and Greg was like, "Oh, you should, you need to talk to to uh, you know Benton, the director." And I was like, "Well, you need to talk to Brandon. He's like, <laughs> he's pretty, he boarded that whole thing, you know, the whole section, you know, not the whole episode, of course." But I do think that's a really cool example of showing how many people it takes to make this whole thing work that I think uh, has been really evident, especially this season. I've been loving seeing so many people on Twitter talking about all of the people involved in making this current season happen and calling out who's involved in every episode, because it is amazing to see how many different pieces have to work together to get any scene of this show off the ground beyond just the names that people immediately recognize. And that's, very cool, just to hear about. <laughs> oh, and it all has to start with a, a good script, you know. So you can, uh, no matter how tall, talented you are as a director or a storyboard artist, uh, you got to have a, a good story to work with. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, if, if I receive more praise on certain episodes, it's because I had a good story to work with, you know. And there were plenty of those on Young Justice, so that was good. So one of the episodes that you directed in season three was Nightmare Monkeys, and that mm-hmm. features a huge art style shift in the middle for the whole mm-hmm. Doom Patrol Go sequence. So I was wondering, how does something stylistic like that affect the directing and storyboarding process? Yeah, so for that one, I have to give a special shout out to Sung Shin who was the storyboard artist um, that had that sequence that turned into a, a Titans, Titans Go episode, basically. 
And so he did a great job on the initial level as, as far as the boards go. Uh, and that just involved watching some Teen Titans go and just trying to, I think Sung might have even talked to some of the people that worked on that show, I want to say. Uh, and we looked at clips from it. And uh, yeah, it just ended up, that ended up being a lot of fun. That was definitely a favorite episode of mine for sure. It's awesome. Yeah, because watching it, it feels so seamless. And then every time I had to kind of sit there and think about it, I'm like, a whole group of people had to learn a whole other art style to figure out how to board this and everything. Like after so many seasons of like, this is what Young Justice looks like. And then being like, here's a whole scene that has to look completely different and move completely different and everything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Character designers and then just uh, from that point all the way into animation and post just getting it to look and feel right I'm sure was a challenge so but yeah it turned out really well it did it's a very memorable episode so to move in to our questions from our lovely patreon supporters one of our patrons sent in this and asked from thomas groves asked have you or the animation team in general ever thought about the feline nature of Artemis's identity as Tigress uh, and how that might influence her design or action sequences with the same going for Cheshire? And I think this is a very cool question, but I do want to expand it a little to ask more generally, were there any sort of specific real world inspirations behind the movement style for any of the characters when it came to directing and storyboarding? There was no discussion of like trying to make it specifically like a cat, but ninja, like for sure. Yeah. So I always uh, found approaching those type of action, action sequences. I just watch a lot of really cool anime for inspiration. And, uh, and usually I, I get inspired, you know, I was uh, watching Naruto or Ninja Scroll, or, you know, sometimes you look at, at uh, real life, acrobatics or footage for inspiration and the rest is just sort of how, how you imagine that type of character would would move and fight just and you know based on the many many hours i've just spent during my entire life watching anime and ninja movies and all that stuff and you know it's definitely less about practical real world uh and more about moves that look cool and fanciful and strike cool poses. It's superheroes. They move how we need them to for the fun action sequences. Yeah, for sure. They can leap higher. They can punch harder. And they've always got to do it and looking cool. <laughs> it's the most essential part. <laughs> right. So thank you so much for spending some time with us here in the Watchtower, Vinton. Where can people find you on Earth Prime? Yeah, I don't, I don't have any... Uh, particular thing i'm pushing now but i'm on uh facebook probably is my largest presence uh, i have a twitter account um uh, which i don't check that often uh, i'm more of a facebook guy you can also find me on instagram which i don't i put sometimes post the uh, artwork on there so i guess you can see that on rare occasions and uh, that's that's about the only place you can find me on Earth Prime, <laughs> other than where I live. So, <laughs> and I don't want to give out that information. So, <laughs> totally valid. Yeah. And thank you to everyone at home for spending some time with us today. If you'd like to join us in discussing this incredible series, you can find us on Twitter at the YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on Tumblr at the YJFiles.tumblr.com, and on our website, CrashingTheMode.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. And if that somehow is not enough for you, you can email us at whelmedpodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to support our show, please consider sharing it with a friend and joining our chats on social media. You can also support the show by giving us a five-star review and or rating on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. The ratings, comments, and subscriptions help others find the show. And if you do leave us a rating, please let us know at our email address or on social media, especially if you live outside the U.S., since we have to look a lot harder to find those ones. If you are able to support us monetarily and would like to do so, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash crashing the mode. Even $1 a month can help us bring you even more awesome discussion sessions, reviews, and more. 
And as always, stay well. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Well